Hero's Cape is not actually dead. I mean, officially speaking, the game is dead as a door now. Hasbro is never gonna bring it back, sorry. But the game has been kept alive and well over the past decade by the community. The C3V and SOV customs projects, which are like the official unofficial units of Heroescape, have been releasing new custom units annually since Hasbro first decided to shatter our dreams over 11 years ago. Wait a minute. Getting custom figures sounds like a whole lot of work. Wouldn't it just be easier to collect the official units? Great question. I spent way too much time and money trying to find out. All great science experiments need a control. Now, in case you haven't noticed, the price of official Heroescape units is forever skyrocketing. And I make $40,000 a year and live in Southern California, so I can't exactly afford to buy an entire expansion wave. So instead, I spent countless of dozens of seconds analyzing every single car that was released, figuring out this. And I settled on this guy's championship winning unit list. But that was just the beginning. With an army in mind, I had to figure out how I was going to acquire all of these units. I spent countless of dozens of minutes on eBay, cross-referencing prices of auctions with what I could find on all things Heroescape to try and find a good deal, and there wasn't one. The meat and potatoes of this army, three Wolves of Bodner units, ran $90 for all three on all things Heroescape. And it was really hard to find three of them for a decent price on eBay. I also couldn't find a Werewolf Lord for under 50 bucks on eBay, and Marku Essen wine was looking to be about $16. But there was one stone I had not yet turned, the community. An absolute unit going by the name Boromir96 posted a link to his cell thread on Heroescapers on the Reddit post for my last video. As I mentioned in said video, oftentimes you're gonna find way better deals there than you will on either ATH or eBay, but I had never actually given the cell threads a try. Turns out B96 had exactly what I needed and for over half the price of what I could find on eBay and ATH. I threw fiscal responsibility to the wind and pulled trig on them on the goddamn spot. Altogether, including shipping and handling, these bad boys ran me $126. With the control group taken care of, it was time to look into the customs. Unfortunately, there aren't any quick and easy threads on custom armies, so I had to do the legwork myself. And it took a minute. Like I said in the beginning of this video, the C3V and SOV custom projects have been releasing new custom units annually which means there are a lot of custom units to choose from and that's just the c3v and sov projects on heroescapers there's over 3,000 threads of creative people sharing their custom units to narrow it down i only looked at the more recent custom unit releases sure the m43 resistance fighters looked cool but that card came out 10 years ago and i need to make sure i could actually get the figures and i wanted to make sure that the cards i got actually worked well together as much fun as it is to blow my money on random bullshit, I wanted to make sure that this army would actually, you know, work. Unfortunately, I'm kind of stupid and impatient. I look up meta builds rather than try and figure it out on my own. And I couldn't find a convenient list of meta builds with C3V and SOV units to choose from. So I went with the next best strategy. I chose something cool. You know what's cool? A Porsche sound in bloke riding a horse that has the disengage ability. Turns out old Arthur Sherwood synergizes with the Nottingham Brigands, so I added them to my list too. And the Nottingham Brigands synergize with Kaw, Loxley, Millerson, just to name a few. So I added them to the list as well. I f***ing nailed that. And in a matter of 10 minutes, I had solved a problem I had had for two days. So now that I had what units I wanted, I needed to figure out how I was going to get them. In every post for every C3V and SOV unit, there's a bit of text that tells you exactly what figure the creator used for that particular miniature. For example, Arthur of Sherwood used the Human Outrider from the Savage Encounters D&D miniature set. One Google search later and it turns out the Savage Encounters set was released 12 years ago. A single booster pack costs $84 and you don't even know what minis are inside. The Desert of Desolation pack that had the militia archers that made up my Nottingham Brigands came out in 2007, and the boosters were out of print. Loxley uses a miniature from the Blood War set, and that came out in 2006. A single booster from that runs $77, and you have no idea what's inside. Millerson's figure, Artist Simber, 
comes from the Tomb of Annihilation set, which is still in print, fortunately, but you can only buy a brick for 115 bucks. Granted, that's eight booster packs, so a greater chance you'll get it and you can sell the rest, but still. The only remotely affordable option here was Ka, who was in the Jungles of Despair set, but that still costs $16 for a booster, and like I said, you have no idea what's inside. I was honestly on the verge of giving up on this stupid project, but then I remembered eBay exists. <laughs> Artist Simber, $3.29. Loxley, $2.75. Ka, $5.99. Militia Archers, $9.75 for all three. And that tricky human outrider that would have cost me $84 for a booster pack that probably didn't even contain him ran me only $14.72. Altogether with shipping and handling, my band of merry men ran me $56.75. That's $69.75 cheaper than the official army I got. But of course I had to hit one more snag. I was thinking like, okay, whatever, like these bases aren't the exact bases, but for the human outrider here, that that's not gonna fit on a Heroscape tile. So I think I need to get at least the peanut base and then carve this off and then re-glue it to the new base. Back to Hero Scapers, more research over to Etsy. By the way, Etsy has a ton of really cool custom Hero Scape stuff. So if you don't know, that gets don't include that. Oh, oh, that's weird. $32.97 and one week later and those bases showed up in my mailbox. Dude, I'm so flippin' excited. I've been working on this project for like literally a month. Dude, all I need to do is just like print out the cards, put the units on the bases, and then we're done. I'm so fucking stoked. Now, let me tell you, I thoroughly enjoyed rebasing these minis. It's not a hard process, you just need to cut them off their bases with an X-Acto knife and then just glue them onto the new bases. But there was something about the process that was just so relaxing. Now, fortunately, I flirted with Warhammer before, so I already had these tools. However, if you've never once tried mainstream plastic crack, you will need an X-Acto knife, a file -er, and plastic glue. You should be able to find all of those for around 20 bucks, either from Amazon or your friendly local game shop. Once I finished switching out the bases, it was time to move on to the cards. I used Photoshop to stack as many as I could onto one document while maintaining the standard HeroScape card size. Then I got them printed on that good, good paper from Office Depot. Don't worry though, printing two full color sheets on that good, good paper from Office Depot only costs you about $1.37. Now, I would give you the dimensions that I used for each individual card, but I actually printed them a little bit too small. And that brings us to now. I've got this scraggly long beard. I've got this mop on my head that I desperately need to get cut, but I have a bunch of really cool HeroScape figures that I am stoked to use the next time my friends and I play. But you never answered the question. Are custom units worth it? So let's compare. I spent $126 on the official units, and the only work that really went into it was just figuring out which competitive armies list I was gonna steal from. On the other hand, my custom army ran me a grand total of $97.39. Now keep in mind, 33 of that was spent on bases, and I still have 12 left. So if I wanna get more, that's not really gonna be a factor. I'd spent an hour or two over a couple days doing research on units, and I had spent about three episodes of Naruto rebasing. So so are they worth it? For me, they scratch different itches. Official units give you that collecting satisfaction. There's a limited amount in the world and there's a finite list that you can just check off. Custom units for me scratch that personalization itch. The customs community shows no sign of ever stopping. People are constantly releasing new custom units like every single week it seems. The C3V and SOV lines are still releasing new units. So. In my opinion, there's not as much satisfaction when it comes to collecting all of them. Which means that which units you decide to go with, I feel are much more indicative of your personality than the official ones. It requires a lot more effort to actually get them. Still not as much as Warhammer though. The quality is borderline same for both. 
Most of my friends were able to tell which ones were custom and which ones were official, but that was only because of the bases, not the figures themselves. Ultimately, I don't think customs ever can or will replace the OG thing, but they provide a great way to expand your roster for relatively cheaper. And if you have completed your collection, maybe when you were a kid or something, and you want to scratch that itch again, they provide an avenue to do that. Now, if y'all will excuse me, I'm going to go see if any of my friends want to play with my toy soldiers.